Yeah, I, I've got a few things. Okay, okay, we're expecting uh, UCLA momentarily. A couple of things before we get our news conference started. I'd like to remind you about your telephones. Would you please check to be sure they're on silent? And as a courtesy to our student athletes and coach, we would appreciate if you would give your name and your affiliation, and please remember to do that, because otherwise I'm going to have to remind you, and that takes up time. The other thing is, if you want to ask our three student athletes a question, that's fine. But please say, I would like to ask Jordan or whatever order you want to do, because we're doing our comments remotely. And it's very important that you help the, the uh, stenographers take care of the information. And finally, when the uh, student athletes are through, they will have approximately five or six minutes after we get the opening statement, depending upon the opening statement. We're going to send them back to the locker room. The locker room will be open, and you can follow them down. But if you do, please go out the back door. Don't go through the front door. And go to the locker room, and they'll tell you how much time is left. And we do appreciate your coming to our news conference. We're going to stop at 9 o
We are now joined by the UCLA Bruins head coach Corey Close, her senior athletes num number three Jordan Canada, number 23 Kelly Hayes, and number 25 Monique Billings. Coach, your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> I, I think I've said this before, but uh, this is this is the hardest uh, time to put words to what's in my heart. It's just really difficult to, on the one hand, uh, get through our disappointment because we really uh, believed and expected to win. Um, and at the same time, there's no way to put words that reflect the depth of my pride and love for this group of young women to my left as well as our entire program. It's hard right now because we are so sad, um, and I didn't, I didn't want to stop coaching them. I wanted to have a chance to coach this group for another day. Um, but the reality is that they have had a historic season. They, I've asked them all year to have an I will mentality and to put the team above themselves. And at every turn, they have made the right choice. And I just, I love them, I'm proud of them, and there's nothing that could happen today. Mississippi State's a really good team, and they executed at really critical times, and I give them a lot of credit. They're a really good basketball team. Um, but I'll tell you, I couldn't be prouder of the foundation, the culture, the way that they have not only represented themselves on the court as amazing basketball players, but as students, as givers in our community. Um, they have set the tone for what UCLA basketball is all about. Okay, we're going to take student athlete questions only, and if you want all three of them, please identify who you want to ask, ask the question before you ask the question, okay? And we'll also, one other thing, your name and your affiliation. We'll start right here on the front right, and then we'll move across and catch the left side. Sue Favor Women's Hoops World, maybe each Jordan, Monique, and Kelly could answer this. You've all commented at various points that you came to UCLA to start a legacy. Do you feel like you've done that, and maybe you could talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. We definitely have left a legacy here at UCLA. Just the things that we've accomplished over these past four years is something that, you know, we will always remember. And um, regardless of the result tonight, you know, that overpowers this loss. And as much as it hurts, we can't, we can't really overlook all the things that we've done for this program. And um, that's why we came here. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I'm just proud that um, I was able to to start something, create something with the girls to the left of me and the players that I play with, past and present, it's just truly special and it's something that you know I can't take for granted and uh, I'll always remember. Yeah, I definitely agree with Jordan. I would say we put our mark and our stamp on this program. Um, we created a legacy that was already here, but we just added on to that and built. And um, for my teammates, um, in the years to come. I know that they have um, a lot more to keep building towards, and so I think that we set the foundation for that, and they have um, good things to look forward to. Yeah, the word legacy is a powerful word. Most people think of the word legacy as banners and you know winning tournaments and stuff like that. And yeah, those are great, but a legacy is also the person that you've become, and it's the growth that you've made, and our team has done that, and we've done that. The past four years we've been here, we've built that legacy with this program within ourselves and how we've impacted people around us. That's part of a legacy. It's not always wins and losses. Um, it's also how you've impacted people on and off the court, and we've done that. And you can see little girls, you can see little boys, you can see adults looking at us and how we've impacted their lives. That's part of our legacy that we've left on people. And it's, it's really exciting to see that with these girls. Question on the front left. Ladies, congratulations on an awesome year. Uh, Adam and Aquino from a Commercial Dispatch in Columbus. Uh, question for Jordan. Um, can you uh, address Mississippi State's defense, particularly in the first half when you guys fell behind by, by 16? And, and then the second part of that, how you guys kept attacking and, and didn't let up and, and cutting it to six late in the game? Yeah, I mean, Mississippi State's, you know, game plan obviously was to pressure us and um, and try and get the ball out of my hands and Japrice's hands. So um, I thought, you know, in the beginning of the game, we kind of had a little lull where we couldn't really run anything or we couldn't execute on the defensive end. And then in the second half, you know, we decided we calmed down, we calmed down a little bit and we knew that we were going to get back in this game if we just continue to attack and run our offense and um, run the floor and push the tempo. And I thought we did a good job and a better job in the second half of doing that. Question on the aisle. 
Uh, hey, ladies. Uh, Todd Palmer with the Los Angeles Times. Monique, I was wondering if you could just uh, tell me what going up against Tierra McCowan was like. I know it was a big focus coming in, and uh, you know, I mean, especially on the board, she was just a real bull and a handful tonight. Yeah, she's a monster, and I knew that coming into the game, and so. Um, it's tough playing against really big girls, um, but I fought. I've tried to do the best that I could and try to take her off the boards and try to box her out, and I definitely had my hands full. It was a challenge, so uh, yeah, much respect to her. Question on the in the aisle here, and then we'll move back to the outside. Uh, two questions, or two can you win LA Daily News. First question for uh, Jordan. I know you won't use it as an excuse, but can you describe kind of what happened to your elbow and how it was feeling in the second half? And then my second question for Kelly, after the game, I saw you kind of comforting Michaela. Uh, what did you tell her and what was that moment like for you? Yeah, um, I remember going to the basket and um, my arm got caught in between two girls and um, it was obviously it's very painful, but um, the doc, uh, our athletic trainer, and our doctor think it's a, a sprained elbow, so just have to go back next week and get MRIs and x-rays and make sure that that's exactly what it is or um, better. So, um, But I didn't try to let that affect me. I tried to play as hard as I could in the second half and gave it all I had. Uh, I think it was Lauren, actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just comforter, comforting her. I mean, I know as a freshman it's hard and you see your upperclassmen and you want to represent well for our program as well as us. And we all have a really close relationship with our, with our freshmen, especially Lauren. And so I know she wanted it bad for us and for herself. And I know it's hard out there. And as an upperclassman, granted being my last collegiate game, I know I, I wanted to feel for her and I feel for our program for myself. But at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be there for her. Um, and I just wanna be there for her um, as a role model. From now on, folks, we're gonna ask one question each or we'll never get everybody around on the inside. Okay, you guys got it over there? All right, okay, we'll let you ask a second question. <laughs> um, for, for Jordan, um, you guys went, I think, six and a half minutes there to start the second quarter. We missed all eight shots and, and uh, weren't able to get a bucket to go down, but it, I thought you guys were getting some quality looks. You were getting in the paint. Um, and you just weren't able to convert. I mean, is that how you felt, or, or was, was Mississippi State just playing really good defense, or, or just a little bit unlucky there? No, I thought we executed our plays pretty well. We just couldn't make shots at the end of the day. Um, that's all it comes down to. Um, again, I thought we did a much better job in the second half of getting our looks and staying poised and not letting that pressure get to us. Um, we just couldn't knock down shots. That was simple. We have time for one more question before we let the student athletes go. Okay, ladies, we're going to let you go back to the locker room. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. And Thank best you. of luck to you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. All right, questions for Coach. We've got a question inside on the left. Uh, Coach Close, Todd Palmer, Los Angeles Times. Um, you know, Tori Schaefer didn't make a lot of shots tonight, but she had two threes in particular that I thought were real daggers for you guys yeah. and, and killed your momentum. Could you just talk about those plays and the impact she made? Well, I, I think you're exactly right. She hit really timely threes, and we had cut it to six. We had a really good rotation. It was late in the shot clock. We had an over-rotation on helping on someone we shouldn't have and left her open at the top of the key, and she delivered. Uh, you know, like Jordan said, you have to, when you have those opportunities, you have to be able to step up and make shots, and, uh, you know, she, she really did, and I thought that was the biggest dagger, but she had one earlier in, the I think, the third quarter that I thought was just as timely. So, you know, she's a really good player, and and, um, you know, I've watched her since she was in high school. And, and, you know, you can just tell she has a level of confidence about her. And she stays really steady. And she, you can tell she's a rock for their team. Question on the aisle left. And then we'll come into the center. Coach, again, congratulations. Uh, Adam you. and Aquino from the Commercial Dispatch. Uh, about their defense, particularly in that second quarter, you did have a lot of really good looks at the basket. But it, it looked like they were uh, – either de denying or just yeah. getting up and, and making things uncomfortable. How, how, did, how did that compare to other, other teams who have tried to do that to you? Well, not many have, and I think that's why we weren't able to adjust as quickly as we would have liked. Uh, honestly, most people, in the, I would say in Pac-12, most people zoned us this year. So we've been the biggest pressure-oriented team in our conference over the past year. So I do think that threw us out of rhythm. We were running all of our plays sort of, um, you know, step outside of where we wanted to
wanted to. And, you know, when we missed, when we did get the shots we wanted, we knew we were going to get high post shots. We knew Mo was going to be able to, Monique was going to be able to get jumpers. Um, and those didn't go down. I think some, some doubt crept in. And I think at halftime, that's what we really talked about, is that your focus has got to be on the present you know, possession only, period. And the all that's your only responsibility is to focus on being present and playing your very best for the sake of the team, that possession. I thought they really lived that in the second half. But, um, you know, they've always – Vic Schaefer's always been a great defensive coach. He's one of the best defensive coaches in the country. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, he's passionate about it. And their kids play reflecting his passion on the defensive end. And, you know, we didn't uh, execute and, and maybe take advantage of some of the mismatches that we thought we had and but credit their pressure I think we weren't able to move the ball to take advantage of some of those uh, as smoothly as we would have wanted to which I think would have created some better rhythm and some probably some higher percentage shots question on the inside aisle Tukey Nguyen LA Daily News coach with Jordan's elbow being what it was what did you think of uh, Japrice's uh, performance off the bench and kind of taking on a little bit more of a role there well, I think Japrice has had a great NCAA tournament, and I think uh, it should give her a lot of confidence moving forward. And um, she loves Jordan so much. They have a very special relationship. And I know that she, there was probably no person quicker to tears than Japrice in our locker room. And part of it is, you know, like it's already been said, she was fighting so hard for Jordan. But I think she can hold her head up really high. And I, I do thought she, I thought these were her best games. The NCAA tournament were her best games of the year for us on the, both the defensive end and the offensive end. Um, obviously, Jordan, I mean, I, I can't say enough about, she's got a heart of a lion. I mean, she was in pain the entire game. And for her to end up with 23 points, eight rebounds, five assists, and one turnover in invisible, excruciating pain, uh, she set a great example of toughness for Japrice Dean to walk into moving forward. We got a question on the outside right, and then we'll go back over there. Uh, Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com. Coach, uh, Vivian's just is so good off the dribble as yeah. well as, sh you know, shooting from the outside. Can you talk about how tough that is to guard her this year, and especially <clears throat> in that crunch time she, she took the ball well, to the hoop? Yeah, but it took their whole team to get her the touches in the right spots. You know, she they ran the backdoor play on the left, and so we were a little bit hesitant, played off, and then she was able to loop back up into the top of the key and get to her right-hand drive. And, you know, we knew that was coming, but they're very disciplined at, especially in crunch time situations and getting it to the person with the hot hand and and she was hot from the from the jump so um, you know credit their entire team for getting it in their players hands in a place to be successful um, but you know she was really good around the basket even when we took away her right hand drive which is what she likes to do best she spun spun back and got her to the self to the free throw line and uh, you know she's a really good player I had a chance to watch her at USA basketball um, this last summer with u23 trial and uh, she's just a really talented uh, offensive player. Short question for Coach. We've got two minutes left on the left side. Uh, I apologize. I might have missed the, the beginning. But can you just speak to the legacy that this team, especially the senior class, leaves? Yeah, hard to put into words. Um, they... <clears throat> it's something that unless you're around our program every day, it's hard to understand, but it's not just the wins are easy to trace. You know, the records, you know, three straight Sweet 16s, you know, the first time in the Elite Eight since 1999, on and on and on. But um, but for me, the thing, I, the legacy that is deepest is the way they've bought into our uncommon transformational experience, The that we really wanted them to be, we say, I am woman, and it's about that you are more than a basketball player. It starts as a person, as a student, and then as an athlete. And they have bought in and they have built a culture um, that we say there's only, there's only two things that will be with you the rest of your life from this experience. And it's who you become and who you impact. And I don't think I could have asked any more of those three seniors about who they've become and who they've, how they've impacted people. Okay, Coach, congratulations on a great season. All right, thank you all very much. If you want to follow them, you'll need to go out the back door, please. Can't go out the front. Thank you very much.
We're going to have an opening statement by Coach Schaefer, and then we're going to take the student athlete questions first. And so it will be very helpful if you will be sure and give your name and your affiliation. And if you're going to ask questions for the student athletes, please, if you're going to say you want all three of them, you need to identify for the sake of the transcription which athlete you want first and which second. It probably would be nicer if you're going to want all those comments to maybe follow them back to the locker room so that we can keep up multiple questions going on instead of long ones for just limited numbers because we only have five or six minutes when they get started, okay? And then we'll take Coach Schaefer. But again, please, your name and your affiliation. And, I, and it's just important that we keep the questions succinct so we get plenty of them in. Everybody okay with that? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Before everybody escapes, thank you all very much for covering this event. We do appreciate your cooperation and going along with all of our rules, so thank you. Okay. Okay, while everybody's getting seated, uh, we'll introduce the Mississippi State Bulldog, Bulldogs, Vic Schaefer, head coach. Morgan William, Tierra McGowan, and Victoria Vivians. Coach, your quick opening statement. <laughs> You're going to have to wait till I finish circling and boxing. <laughs> Can we go ahead and take the student question? Oh, I got it. Okay. I'm just making, I got to make my circles in my boxes. You just got to give me a minute. Um, first of all, I just want to congratulate UCLA on a tremendous year. I've been up two nights with visions of Jordan Canada and um, 25 running up and down the floor, just Billings the other night. You know, we played those guys uh, two years ago in a scrimmage in October and they're just, you know, Corey's done such a tremendous job with that program. Those kids are so, de have developed so much and uh, um, we really challenged our kids. Um, we really, uh, you know, we talked about transition defense and the importance of rebounding. 
And um, I challenged all of our kids. You know, we, we out-rebounded them 39-33 after watching them just I just thought they, they absolutely destroyed Texas the other night on the boards. And uh, I have so much respect for Texas. And, and I just thought, uh, you know, UCLA played so hard. But, boy, giving God the glory for number 36 today. These kids, uh, I think that's number 126. Is that right, Brock, for this senior class? 125. Um, it's just so hard to do to, to live. They have now lived all year with the bullseye on their back. That's really hard to do, y'all. And, the, and then they added another bullseye as they went through the year undefeated. Um, we've had a very difficult, you know, I think this region was very difficult. And um, these kids are, are special. Uh, this entire team has been very, very special. Uh, to be able to, to handle that night in and night out in our conference, uh, it is just extremely hard. And then to do it with our uh, postseason, uh, with the teams we've had to go against, uh, just take my hat off to them. They're just, they're really incredible. I mean, to, to be where they are, to do what they've done, is, is really, really difficult to do. And I, I just can't be more proud of them. I was really worried today, y'all, I got four seniors, and I don't have the words whenever this comes to an end. I don't have the words. These seniors have meant so much to our program, to, our, to, our, to my career, to me personally, and I'm just so glad the good Lord gave us another week. Um, these kids have worked their hearts out, uh, and uh, they deserve it. I think they'll be on a mission. You know, We talked about UCLA being on a mission today. And I was proud of what Victoria said the other day. Well, you know what, we, you know, we, our, our, our vision, our focus, our intensity hasn't changed since last year. We're even more intent on trying to do what we didn't get done a year ago. So, uh, proud of our kids today. How about our fans? Uh, made this arena really special uh, for both teams. Great environment for TV as well as for both teams, and again, Boy, it was a special day for these Bulldogs. Okay, student questions on the outside left, and we'll move back. There we go, and then he'll move to the front. Todd Engel with the Kansas City Star. Uh, Victoria, I noticed that you guys came together uh, with about 20 seconds left and kind of walked. Uh, I'm right here. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and, and you walked uh, arm and arm up the floor. Um, I don't know if that's a thing that you guys have done all year, but kind of where did that uh, start from, and what was that feeling like to kind of walk – arm in arm with 20 seconds left, you know, when the game was over? Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I, can't I, got, you got, I got it. Okay, uh, okay. So in the huddles, you know, the ref was like, you know, we need to go ahead and go. So I was like, y'all, let's form a line and just walk and talk because they was trying to hustle us, hustle us up to get to the free throw line. So I was like, I'm going to walk and talk and we're just going to go from there. Thanks, Maury. We got a question on the aisle left. Ladies, congratulations, uh, Adam Inakino from the Commercial Dispatch for Victoria. Uh, can you talk in the in the fourth quarter uh, about the isolation plays, how you wanted to attack, and particularly that that backdoor play where Monroe found you on the bounce pass for the second time after the first one didn't work out so well? Um, coach had called to play, and he asked me where they hugging me, and I told them, yeah, they were trying to deny me the ball. So if they did not the ball, that means I can, the back door is going to be wide open. The first time, it was my fault because I didn't go through. And the second time, we executed the play, and it worked fine. Oh, the isolation. Um, coach was saying they couldn't guard me, just go try to get a bucket and lay it up. And or if I miss, we foul score both. We got a question on the far rear, and then we'll come up to the front. Bernie Miller with the Clarion Ledger. Um, Tierra, so Canada stole the ball for you in the fourth quarter and had that layup and uh, made it a six-point game. Then you guys called a timeout. I mean, what did you guys kind of say to each other going to that timeout to kind of hold, hold them off in the fourth quarter? Um, that we were fine and that we didn't need to get rattled. I mean, we've been in that situation before where we kind of got rattled. But, I mean, we stayed cool. You know, we came back out and executed the plays that coach called. So, I mean, we didn't get out of our bodies and, you know, get rattled. So, we were fine. Got a question on the front right here. Uh, Sean Roney, Dos Mundos newspaper here in Kansas City for uh, Tierra. Um, could you just talk about how your early season schedule prepared you for your postseason, specifically how 
a competition like the, the Cancun Challenge where you're playing multiple games in one city prepares you for a situation like this weekend where you have to play two games in one city and for Columbus where you could possibly play two again. I mean, this season we face, you know, everything that we're going to see in the NCAA tournament where it's, we're tied or it's a close game or it's a blowout, but we still have to execute. I mean, this game, I mean, yeah, it was a close game, but at the same time, we maintain what we were supposed to do. We, our mindsets were all, you know, we're good, we got this. So we didn't veer off from anything that we haven't did all season. Question on the outside left. Uh, for Morgan, uh, can you address the fact that whenever they got close, there was always a big shot that the team hit? And maybe that kind of builds off of what Tierra was saying about you guys didn't get rattled, you didn't get out of your body. I like that, that was good. Um, and just talk about maybe the poise, the, the confidence that you guys had in, in answering their runs. Oh yeah, um, well every time we get a huddle, you know, it's four scenes in there and then it's T. And we was always talking like, we gotta execute this play, then we gotta get a stop. So we're saying we need to get a stop, score, stop, score. And I feel like that's what we did. I mean, we executed plays and went back down, got a stop. And I feel like we just kept repeating and just kept building on it and that helped us. Anything else for our student athletes? Final question on the left side. And for Tierra, did you see coaches uh, leap there and pump fist after you offensive rebounded Morgan's miss and, and put it back? No, I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, ladies, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Good luck next week, and we'll let you go back to the locker room. If you'd like to follow the student athletes, you'll need to go out the back door, please. Okay, the first question for coach on the right side, and then we'll come to the aisle. Uh, Michelle Vopo, ESPN.com. Congrats, Vic. Thank um, you, Michelle. You've talked about how good this team is offensively, and it's interesting. If you go back two years, you guys had a, a rough game offensively against UConn. Can you just talk about the evolution <laughs> with a lot of the same kids? Because uh, Corey complimented just how good your offensive execution was today. Yeah, we scored 38 points that day. That was kind of rough. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we're different. I mean, um, we're just different because of our skill set, because we've got, you know, kids that can stretch it and, and shoot it. Um, and you've got the big piece inside where you just can't, you can't double on her. If you do, she's, we can play through her, Michelle. We, you know, a lot of times you can play to a big kid and that's it. It just goes in and it's either in or, you know, that's it. We can play through T. She's really good at that. And, um, you know, you go double her, well, She's going to find where it came from. She's had enough experience now. She's seen every defense you can possibly get of her. So this team is special. Now you got Morgan, who's all of a sudden now decided she's excited about scoring. And that, that adds a dimension that we probably haven't had, you know, uh, consistently all year. Um, I thought Jazz came off the bench today and gave us some huge minutes um, and did a great job. I'm just, we're really fortunate at point guard to have that kind of point guard play. But... Tierra, 23 and 21. I mean, the kid is incredible. And uh, I just thought uh, all four of those seniors, Blair makes two big threes today, makes a big one when they'd cut it to six. They leave her open. She knocked it down from about 23 or four. Uh, that was a big shot. They were done, and that's where they were coming off a of tee. They'd come off a of tee on that set, and they left her open, and she made them pay. So, um, it's uh, it is this. This group's hard to guard. There's no question about it. They've I've said it. I've walked off the floor sometimes and go. I see what it's like to have Golden State because this group is you know they just they can all score it. Outside right, Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. Coach, going kind of off of Blair early in the third quarter, she may have let Japrice get off for a couple threes. I saw you tell her politely she needs to get over that. What was that like for you to see her respond in the way she did? Hey, that kid, you know, I, I just, you know, she's just special. And she, she's, she's done it all her career. She takes coaching. Um, she probably takes it a little harder from, from the coach than, than the rest of them. Um, but she's a pro. I mean, she knew it. And, uh, you know, it was an adjustment she needed to make. And it, I just need a reminder of that. But... Don't worry, I'll get chastised more for that when I get home from my fans than anything else that happened today. They don't like it when I coach her like that. On the aisle left, 
Logan Lowry, Daily Journal and Tupelo. Vic, your coach stayed on until halfway through the second quarter. You must have really liked what you saw in this first half. What did you <laughs> like about your team? <laughs> so now I'm being, you know, evaluation was on our board today is one of the thoughts. So now I'm being evaluated for my coat, how long it stays on. Um, you know, I just had a real confidence today, y'all. I, I, you know, I had a devotional this morning before I went to shoot around. Uh, the TV crew made a comment, Coach, this is the most chill we've ever seen you. I just had a real confidence in this group. Um, I was very concerned this could, you know, because I respect UCLA and, and Corey Close so much and her staff, you're always concerned about, you know, what if it is the last one. But I, I just, I didn't feel that was going to happen today. I just had a real confidence today um, that I got the better team. And, uh, you know, they just, I just felt like they were ready to play, as they have been all year long. Um, you know, we got beat by a really good team back in the, in the championship game of our tournament. They played better than us. Um, it, it, but, but it wasn't that we weren't ready to play or any of that. It just, it wasn't our day. But these kids have been ready every game all year long. And I just really felt good about the day. Um, I really felt good when our kids wanted to walk to half court and shake their hand and they turned and went to the locker room. I thought, and, and our kids, you know, we usually like going and shaking hands at, half, at the half court. And uh, apparently that wasn't the protocol today in the NCAA tournament. So it kind of, you know, it kind of rubbed our kids wrong, to be honest with you. I don't know if it was planned or if that was something that was supposed to happen, but our kids noticed it. We got a question halfway back um, inside. Hey, Vic. Robbie Falk with Starwood Daily News. I have, I have a couple questions, if I can. No, no, uh, just one. Okay. Well, we got two other people, Coach. Blair hit three big three-pointers. Just, I guess, how critical do you feel like those were, and how is she able to come in the clutch like that? It seems like when you need her, she makes those big shots. Well, she did. She, uh, you know, again, just, just happy for her. I know how hard she's worked to be in the position she's in. Um, and to see her take advantage and, and, and be prepared. That kid's worked her tail off all her career for that moment. And to see her be able to answer the bell in that moment is just really rewarding as a coach. It wouldn't matter if she's my daughter or not. If you've got kids that have worked and prepared to be in that moment, again, she's the poster child for everything that's right with kids staying the course and competing and fighting and getting better, not fleeing. And uh, I know her parents, her daddy is really proud of her because uh, I know he's <laughs> rebounded a lot for her over the course of his life. And uh, he's proud of her for making those shots as well. And they were big ones. The, the one when they had cut it to six was really a big one, no doubt about it. I believe she made that one from the top of the key. And she made one over there right in front of the bench. Question on the outside left. Coach, Ali Trost with Ballout Media. The SEC is ripe with competition, and you know that firsthand. Is it what? Is ripe with competition. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are some of the most skilled teams in the league, and in the AP final 25, top 25 poll, seven teams, including your own, were listed. How does that in-season competition that you guys face, game in and game out, help prepare you for big moments like this in the tournament? I don't think there's any question. When you go through that gauntlet, you're prepared for anything coming down the pipe. And... You know, I'm glad you brought that up about the AP. We lose one game to number eight in the country, and we drop from two to four. Again, our kids notice that. Um, we lost one game. Is there anybody else in the country that's lost one game? But we dropped to four. And, and again, hey, no problem, but I think our kids wear that a little bit. That, and, and again, but the league is absolutely a nightmare. But that's the fishbowl we, we choose to live in. And, and so when you do that, you got to get ready night in and night out. I mean, it's, and it's, that's the thing that's really remarkable about this team. Their average margin of victory in 16 Southeastern Conference games is 24. Last year when we went 13 and 3, it was 13, and I thought that was off the chart. This team's average margin of victory in our league was 24, which is it's, it's unbelievable. And again, I think that's how special this group's been. Every night, every night they've been ready. Hard to do. 
Final question for Coach right here on the front aisle. Um, Hunter Cloud with the reflector. Um, after the game, you went over and gave the band high fives. What has their support meant to you and your team in this tournament? Well, our, our band and our cheer and uh, all our fans, just they're the best. Look, if, if we weren't here today, I'd, that arena would have been empty. Uh, it was just incredible how our fan support has grown and mushroomed to where it is today. And, you know, we, we love them. We, we, we cherish them. We appreciate them so much. They've come to Kansas City, and by the way, this has been a great place. Uh, so many good people that have uh, really gone out of their way to make this a wonderful place for the, for the regional. But they've come here. They've spent three, four days. They've spent their money. Um, they've taken off work. Uh, and so for me, I, I, I'm cognizant of that. I, I would hate to walk out of that arena tonight, not only for my kids, but I'd hate to look at any of the, my fans in the eye and know that we lost that game because I know what it means to them. Um, you know, when we lost the one game, you thought the sky was falling in Starkville. I mean, it was just the way it is right now. But for us right now, and, and the answer to your question is they're very special. All of them are. Fans, band cheer, the whole nine yards. And um, again, it's not like that most places. You know, Mississippi State is very special for women's basketball. But it's also very special in a broad term for our fan base. They are passionate. I'm telling you, passionate about their university. And uh, it's what makes it so, so special and a, a great place to be. Okay, Coach, congratulations and good luck at the Final Four. Praise the Lord and go dogs.